One morning in the summer of 2007, a farmer in southern India set off to plough his land. It was 7.30 in the morning and we were on our way to the fields. There were four children gathered here. They said, brother, someone has buried a baby here. The baby was wrapped with a cloth and buried deep in the ground. She shouldn't have been alive, but somehow she was. We are surprised because the baby is buried under the ground and covered with the moulds and usually they will die. But this baby is uh, alive. Hospital staff named the two-day-old girl Bu Lakshmi, the earth goddess. Every week in India, thousands of baby girls are aborted, killed or abandoned simply because of their gender. Bu Lakshmi survived. She's one of the lucky ones. India has one of the fastest growing economies in the world. But despite the new prosperity, old traditions hold firm. Sons have long been prized over daughters. They preserve the family name and traditionally look after elderly parents. Girls are often seen as an expensive burden, with parents forced to pay a costly wedding dowry when they get married. Across India, boys now dramatically outnumber girls, and those sex ratios are getting worse. Across the country are hundreds of children's homes, filled mainly with girls. The birthday girl here is Harshita, and she was abandoned last year in October. And she was, uh, she was just two months old. She was put in a basket and she was left with a small feeding bottle near the gate. And we don't know who the mother is, we don't know who left her. We don't know anything about her. We don't know her birthday, so today is a very auspicious day. We thought it should be her birthday. <laughs> the children here are abandoned children and they're abandoned in the hospitals here near the gate and some of them are rescued from being sold and they end up here all sorts of stories and all of them who are abandoned are girls girls can be abandoned at any time in their childhood one of the newest arrivals is seven-year-old pushpa She's struggling to settle. Sandhya is giving her lots of close attention. Kalachinda, bad and most of them come from very difficult circumstances. From an early age, they know that they are not wanted or maybe less wanted. It takes a lot of time for them to adjust. If they come as infants, they gel with us very easily. But if they come when they are seven to eight years old, it takes some time. And it all depends upon us. If we give them the feeling of security, feeling of love, they are very happy.
Back in the sleepy village of Mabubnaga, the grandfather of the buried baby girl has been arrested. He's made a confession to local reporters. <laughs> Abdul Rahman's confession has shocked the village but many have sympathized with the difficulties he faced. A girl had been born. They already had several, and now another girl. Financially, they just couldn't cope. It was poverty that caused it. The whole village is pointing fingers at them, saying they put a live child in the earth. Abdul Rahman has now been charged with attempted murder. For his family, rolling handmade cigarettes is their only way to earn a living. His wife earns just over a dollar for rolling 1,500 such cigarettes, which will take her and two of her daughters the whole day. Life is very difficult for me. When we have food, we eat. When we don't, we just stay quietly at home. He kept wanting boys, so we had six girls before the two boys. And at the end, we had this girl. I wanted to abort her, but the doctor said it wasn't possible. Since the birth of the two sons, the daughters have been neglected. My father loves them a lot. He doesn't love us. He used to buy them new clothes, but nothing for us. If we disciplined them, father beat us and said don't touch them. He said he only had two sons and didn't care what happened to the seven of us, even if we died. With so many daughters in the family, their parents face the almost impossible task of finding wedding diary for all of them. Getting these girls married is a big problem, getting them married when they're grown up. Some ask for 20,000, some for 50,000, some for 10,000. That's how it is here. That means for each daughter, their parents will have to pay the equivalent of up to three years' earnings in dowry. The practice of dowry was actually banned in India 50 years ago, but even today, few marriages take place without it, leaving millions of poorer families heavily in debt. Girls are not just seen as a huge burden by the rural poor. Even educated middle-class women like Sandhya face pressure to produce sons. When I had my daughters, especially the second one, a lot of my relations and my friends, they said, poor Sandhya, she has a daughter once again, the second time. I feel really irritated when somebody says like that. Even the educated people, they feel they should have a son. Just to carry family name, you need a son. And just to light the funeral pyre, you need a son. Everyone knows daughters are more affectionate, concerned, loving, and they care for their parents more than sons. But still they want a son because it's just to carry the family name. Son, that is son obsession in the society. India's obsession with sons has gone on for centuries. Now, the advances of the 21st century have only made things worse. On the edge of Kodapa is the newly built district hospital, equipped with some of the latest medical technology. For the past 20 years, ultrasound scanning has been widely available in India. So this is the head of the fetus, so we can see the heart functioning. Fetal age is 13 weeks, that is three months. As well as detecting fetal abnormalities, the new scanners can, of course, reveal the gender of the developing baby. That's meant that many Indian families are now desperate to know whether they're expecting girls. 
It's not easy to recognize sex of the baby before 15 weeks. But after 18 weeks, it, you can recognize sex. Everybody asks for it. They say, so your first cell, anyhow, we are not going to remove. Please tell this. It is a big problem. One thing uh, they show that those who don't want the female baby, they are trying by hook or crook to get rid of it. Abortion is legal in India up to 20 weeks, but abortion on the basis of gender is not. In 1994, the Indian government banned sex determination tests in an effort to stop the abortion of females. But that's not stopped the problem. In Kadapa, like in the rest of India, a string of private nursing homes and ultrasound clinics have sprung up. Ten years ago, there was only one scanning machine in this town. Now there are dozens of them in the private clinics. It's illegal to reveal the sex of the baby. But some of the doctors and nurses are revealing the gender of the baby. And if it's a girl baby, people are aborting it. The nurses, in fact, do not know how to identify the sex of the baby. They say it's a girl and it turns out to be a boy, which is real tragedy. In the summer of 2007, in the neighboring state of Orissa, the issue of sex selection was forced into the headlines. Dozens of aborted female fetuses were found dumped in a well, on land belonging to a private ultrasound clinic. Close by, in the ruins of an abandoned house, were found the bodies of nearly full-term baby girls. The story made national news, and protesters took to the streets. Telling the government to stop female feticide. Yeah, and so we, we are shouting against that we want freedom, freedom from exploitation, freedom from female feticide. We want freedom to live. Following the protests, half a dozen private ultrasound clinics in Orissa were shut down. Yet across India, this thriving industry is proving hard to control. Sandhya is trying to reduce the number of unwanted girls in her town. She's come to the outskirts of Kadapar. One of my friends told me that there's one woman here who's pregnant and she knows that it's a girl and she wants to abort the girl. So I'm going to check up uh, what's happening. I want to talk to her. The woman already has a son and Sandhya is meeting with her and her in-laws. Mm. <laughs> 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 Change <laughs> 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 My government schools free because they are not. But you, 
ఇంకా మేము ముసలిళ్ళం అయిపోయినా కూడా ఉంటాయి ఇంకా ఎక్కువ అవుతాయి అప్పుడు ఐదు వేల పది వేలు చేస్తాయి ఇప్పుడు నచ్చాలి ఐదు వాళ్ళులే సాధారణ నచ్చలే అలా చేసాం చూ నిద్ర రావడంలే మేడం అలా చేసి పాపం మేము కానీ వాడి ఏం చేయాలి the situation is very helpless and i'm so sad that i'm not able to do anything we are not able to do anything boy preference is so much in the culture and the dowry system is killing the common man especially the poor families it's a very helpless situation for them Getting wealthier has not changed traditional attitudes to girls. In fact, India's middle classes have embraced the new ultrasound technology as much as the rural poor. In 1996, Pooja Salat married a multi-millionaire industrialist. I spent 11 years with him. He was the first feeling that he gave me to be a mother. Pooja gave birth to twin girls. She says her marriage turned violent when she got pregnant for the second time. Ab ladki nahi chahiye aur they forced me to I mean go for a sonography and all these things. Fir forcefully ki nahi humko nahi chahiye. 5 months pregnancy thi tab fir bhi abort karwa diya. 5 months pregnancy is I mean it's very dangerous. Puri ladki ho gayi thi. Puri yani puri. हमारे फैमिली में एक लड़की ज्यादा हो तो कोई फर्क नहीं पड़ता था क्योंकि फाइनेंशियली ऐसा कुछ प्रॉब्लम नहीं था टेन इयर्स की डॉटर हुई तो उसके लिए चलो फर्दर एजुकेशन के लिए टेन लैक्स रखे ट्वेंटी लैक्स रखे ऐसा नहीं है पर चलो उसकी शादी के लिए इतना खर्चा आएगा ये फंक्शन होगा ये करेंगे वो करेंगे अभी भी अब यहाँ की मैंटेलिटी ऐसी ही है सो मिडिल क्लास में क्या है कि चलो वो सब करना है उससे अच्छा है कि अभी चलो पहले से वो डॉक्टर के पास जाए और उस पर जितना स्पेंड करना है वो कर ले बहुत सारे फैमिलीज मेरे आई मीन आजू बाजू देखे कि उनको एक लड़का चाहिए कि उनका एम्पायर चराने के लिए लड़का चाहिए उसके पीछे उनको एक नाम देना चाहिए लड़की है तो क्या ससुराल चली जाएगी और उसके पीछे पैसा जाएगा आएगा नहीं मेरी साथ एक थी कि उसके आई मीन उसका फैमिली भी एकदम कंजर्वेटिव था दे आर वेरी रिच बट उनको क्या कि उनको लड़की नहीं चाहिए थी तो उसके पांच अबॉर्शन हुए फिर भी अभी अभी भी आई मीन दे आर ट्राइंग फॉर सन पूजा इज वन ऑफ द फ्यू मिडिल क्लास वुमेन हु इज प्रिपेयर्ड टू स्पीक आउट अबाउट हर एक्सपीरियंसेस She's now left her husband and reported him to the police. He and nine of her in-laws are awaiting trial, accused of forcing her to undergo illegal abortions. home it's not just abandoned girls who are given the chance of an education village women are taught skills which will give them the ability to earn a living independent of their families one of them is about to get married pelle en tarvata mudduga emane pilichukunta aakti ledu nene decide cheskole budhi ani vichadu tirisnaada Despite the banter, Shravani knows only too well the difficulties her marriage is causing to the family. Sandhya would prefer these women to get married without their families giving dowry but she knows most families have little option 
కష్ట వాళ్ళు కష్టపడి నాకు కఠినం ఇచ్చి పెళ్లి చేసి మళ్ళా నన్ను వదులుకొని వాళ్ళు బాధపడాలి అసలు మా అమ్మకి ఏమి ఉండలేము ఒక చేయని తప్ప కంత మా అమ్మ బంగారు వేసి తెచ్చుకున్నాము మా నాన్న అయితే మా అమ్మ బంగారు అమ్ముతా అంటే బాధపడినాడు నాకు కట్నం ఇచ్చి ఇప్పుడు పెళ్లి చేస్తే వాళ్ళ చదువులకు ఇబ్బంది అవుతుంది అని నాకే బాధ అవుతుంది ఇంకా ఫస్ట్ నాకు ఇచ్చినారంటే సెకండ్ ఆమెకి ఇవ్వాల్సిందే మా ఇంకా ఎక్కువే ఇవ్వాల్సిందే మా తక్కువకి ఎవరు ఒప్పుకోరు Sandhya knows that Shravani's wedding diary and those of her sisters will leave her family heavily in debt. It's the price of having daughters. wash the feet of the groom give away the bride to the groom and the family so your rights and responsibilities are all transferred to the groom and even the family name she takes the groom's family name that's what they have to pay the dowry for and you know run into debts the whole of their life for having a girl It's been 15 years since Arty Home was set up. During that time, Sandhya has seen the numbers of unwanted girls in Kadapa steadily rise. She's becoming increasingly concerned. She's decided to build a concrete crib at the gates of the home where babies can be left. That way, those who are abandoned shortly after birth stand a better chance of survival. Sometimes they just leave the baby on the doorstep on a rainy day and it's very risky. And once they left a the baby in the open cardboard box on a heavy rainy day. So we could not save the baby. The baby died, the girl died. Another baby was left here when she was 7 or 8 months old and it was again a rainy day. But the girl could um, at least uh, crawl inside and she came inside. So we could save the baby and she is with us now. Sandhya's idea is that babies can be left in the crib, no questions asked. If anybody wants to leave the baby without uh, their identity being revealed, they can keep the baby here and go. Hopefully whoever leaves the baby, whether it's a mother or a relation or father, whoever, they'll keep a small blanket to make the baby more comfortable. Though she's an unwanted baby, at least making comfortable before leaving the child. Hopefully they'll do that. Barely 12 hours later, word about the new crib at Artie Home has spread around the town. This newborn girl's less than a day old. They were leaving the baby in the crib and they were just disappeared. The watchman saw and they said, he said, go and get the baby inside. Huh? 
Within minutes, the baby's breathing has become erratic. Doctor, they miss for them. Check for is sick or die. I think I can say this kid. The baby is premature and her lungs are not fully developed. Baby is unable to take the oxygen properly or not because of the lungs' immaturity. He is around 32-33 weeks old. The heartbeat is okay. Only the problem is because of respirations. Chances of survival are not good, I can say. Sandhya is returning to Arti home to see if she can trace the baby's mother. Sandhya is getting the grandmother to sign a document that gives Artie home legal authority to take care of the girl. We are not going to call the police. The very purpose of our building the crib is not to uh, just hand them over to the police. They don't want to reveal the identity. They just wanted to put the baby in the crib and leave. The watchman caught them. Otherwise, they wouldn't have come here. Whether it is unwanted or orphan or abandoned, we don't know. But we have to take care of the baby. <laughs> Later that evening, the baby appears to have improved. She's breathing and she looks better than before. She's opened her eyes and she's looking. Three days, madam. Madam, the premature baby girl. Three days, madam. What is this? What is this? I feel so helpless. But there's nothing in our hands. There is just fate. And the mother must have taken something to abort the baby. Knowing it's a girl. And that's why she's so weak. She must have taken some crude things to abort the baby.
this is Durga's temple. Durga is the symbol of female strength. So I came here to pray for the baby. Hopefully, baby will survive, God willing, the baby will survive. I only hope and I wish the baby survives. And if she survives, we'll name her Durga. The following morning, Sandhya's received a call. It's bad news. The baby has not survived. It's the first time the baby died. There's so many babies who are left here. But this is the first time the baby died. Such a sad feeling. But there's nothing we can do. We have to accept. We have to accept such things and move on in life. It's the annual festival of Rakhi at Arti home, a time when the relationship between brothers and sisters is celebrated. I want them to have that brother and sister feeling, and it's a long-term relationship they have. Girls tie threads around the wrists of the boys to remind them to look after their sisters. Sandhya is encouraging the boys to value their bonds with the girls long after they leave. So once they go out of Hathi home, they should be more responsible towards their sisters. They should take care, protect the sisters. So that uh, feeling would go a long way. Later, and Sandhya is on her way to meet a woman who used to work at Arty Home and is now heavily pregnant. The woman has become very distressed. She's gone for scanning and she knows uh, it's a girl and she's very upset about it and she might do anything. I'm just going to check up what's happening. I want to talk to her. డాక్టర్ <laughs> నీకు ఒకవేళ డబ్బులు ఉండి ఆడపిల్లని ఏం చేసి ఉండేదానివి ఆడపిల్లగా నేనే కష్టపడుతున్నానే తను మళ్ళా ఆడపిల్లగా భవిష్యత్తుగా మళ్ళా ముందుకు వచ్చా ఆడపిల్ల ఇంకా ఎన్ని కష్టాలు పడాల్సిందో సాందో ఏమో అనేది చాలా దిగులుగా ఉంది ఇంకొక నెల ఉంది కదా నెల తొమ్మిదో నెల అయిపోయింది తర్వాత ఇంకొక నెల ఐదు వారాలు సో ఇంకా ఐదు వారాలు పుట్టిన తర్వాత ఏమి పాపలు ఏం చేయవు కదా నువ్వు ఫీడ్ చేస్తావు కదా బేబీని పా పాపని నువ్వే పాలు ఇల్లు ఇస్తావు కదా ఇంకా చూసుకుంటావు కదా భాగ్యకు ఉంది ఇప్పుడు నాకు ఉండేది ఒక కుదిరే కదా బాగా చూసుకోవడంలో నీకు అట్లా ఇంకేమైనా కష్టంగా ఉంటే నాకు చెప్తానండు చెప్పు బాగా చూసుకుంటావా ఆడపిల్ల అయినా కూడా ఏంటి ఏం అట్లా చెప్పు అట్లా అట్లా చూసుకుంటావు కదా బాగా
she's very silent when I ask her to keep the baby and she seems to be very stubborn about it. Main thing is she's not taking good care of herself. She's not eating properly, she's not taking medication. If it was a boy, she would have uh, really took care and she would have taken medication. But now um, she neglected herself for the past two weeks. So looking at her condition, I feel she doesn't want the baby anymore. Will you take the girl? If it comes to that level, definitely I will take the baby and we'll keep the baby with us. When I see these children, I feel very sad because they are losing out on mother's love. So beautiful mother and child relationship and uh, mothers must have felt so bad leaving the children and the children are losing out on everything. We are trying to replace, we try to do everything but it can't be the same. If it was their mother, every little action, every little word, she would cherish every moment. But here, we talk to them, we take care of them, we do everything possible. But still, I feel we are not, I mean, uh, mother's life is different. You just can't replace it. Following Sandhya's visit, Ruma Devi's still not formed a bond with the girl she's carrying and is already thinking of her next pregnancy. I'm confident I'm going to have a boy next time. I'm sure of it. So we're going to give this baby girl to Sandhya. With us, she'll face a lot of difficulties. There, she'll be educated and happy. The girl will have a life, won't she? Those are my feelings now. After delivery, I'll see how I feel. It's in the wealthiest parts of India where the gender imbalance is greatest of all. In places like Haryana, close to the capital Delhi, people have long had the money to afford ultrasound scanning. And now boys dangerously outnumber girls. In this village, 10 days of festivities are underway. A baby boy has been born. For 10 days, his aunts, his sisters and his grandmother will all celebrate. It is only at the birth of a boy that people dance and sing. Nothing is done when a girl is born. We're happy because when this boy marries, he'll bring a bride here. A girl will leave us, taking our wealth. She'll be crying, and she'll leave us crying too. In some areas of Haryana, there are only 800 girls for every thousand boys. That means there's now a marked shortage of brides. I have four sons. It's a big problem if you can't get your kids married. It's a big problem for your honor, a big problem. It's only when your kids are married that you can be at peace, only when they're married. Ramahar is the eldest boy in the family. For years, his parents tried to find a wife for him in Haryana. I was afraid God hadn't destined me to have a wife. I thought I would be a bachelor all my life. In desperation, Ramahir's father made contact with a family in one of the country's poorest areas, nearly 3,000 kilometers away. At last, 
a wife had been found for Ramaher. For the new bride, Sushma, life has not been easy. When I call my mom, she says to me, why aren't you coming home? I want to see you. I want to see my daughter again. I tell her it's just too far. In this village, there are many men who can't get their brides from other places. They don't have money. So how can they? There are many men who will die unmarried. By the year 2020, if sex ratios continue to fall, India's missing girls will amount to a million a year. Back in Kadapa, Sandhya is on her way to see Rama Devi again. She's just given birth to her baby. How difficult the circumstances must be. Now for her to say that uh, even before the baby is born, she said, I don't want the baby, I don't want the girl. I'll try and convince her and if she still doesn't want the baby, I'll take the baby. Sandhya has come to a nearby town where Rama Devi has moved in with her parents since the birth. <laughs> Sandhya is prepared to take the girl back to Arti home today. <laughs> I'm very glad that she's changed her mind and she wants to take care of the baby. I was hoping and I was wishing and it happened. I'm really glad. Sandhya believes that if the birth of a baby girl is truly to be celebrated in India, there needs to be a fundamental shift in attitudes. She's looking for husbands for the elder girls and is only accepting offers from families who are not asking for dowry. It's only when social customs like dowry come to an end that girls will be as valued as boys and that regardless of gender, all of India's children will be given an equal chance to live.